Hey, good morning, everybody, and happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Thank you very much for your service, um, especially, especially Vietnam vets, especially if there's any World War II vets. I doubt they're probably watching my channel, but uh, God bless you, man, the greatest generation, and especially the Iraq vets. Thank all you guys, seriously. All right, onward to my video today. So I, I'm thinking about, uh, I was watching my favorite, one of my favorite motivators, Wes Watson, and I've never been to jail. I've came very close, very, very close many times, and that was my motivation to, one of, some of my motivation to get clean and sober. Uh, let me fill you in on some of my close calls. One comes to mind. Uh, Okay, I had to get heroin every morning. I, I started out with pills. I was already an addict. Let's let's not candy coat things. I was a cocaine and I was a cocaine and crack addict from the time I was about 20, 19 or twenty, and then I, I was an addict my whole life. Uh, then pills, and then Dr. Cough pills, and I was cross addicted cocaine, heroin, crack. But I had to get my heroin every morning, or I would get sick. Now here's the fucked up thing. And I'm sure other addicts are like this too. I had to get that heroin in the morning or I would get sick. Every half hour that went by, I would go downhill more. Chills, sweating, uh, weak. I could barely climb a set of stairs every single morning. Have to go get five to ten bags every morning. Thirty-five to sixty dollars every single morning. What if my dealer's not there? Panic sets in, and this is the fucked up part. If, okay, if you're a heroin addict, and you take cocaine, or crack, or, or meth, or any other kind of speed, it pushes whatever is left covering up those receptors in your brain, the opiate receptors, it pushes it off, pushing you into instant withdrawal. And it gives you a, uh, a jittery, awful speed rush. It, it, it speeds up your withdrawal and gives you a very jittery high. All right. So, so some mornings I go to call. This is back in 2004, 2000, 2001, 2002, 3, 4. I didn't have a cell phone. Go to a pay phone. Dealer's not around. Here's the fucked up thing. Then I, I would try to go to the street, find just anybody on the street to buy it from. If I, and this is like, you know, 9, 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes it's hard. And here, here's where it gets bizarre. Now, I couldn't get the heroin. I had lied or whatever to get this money to get my fix for the day. I would then, instead of going home and waiting a half hour or 15 minutes... Until a dealer did pop up, I would go buy crack. Knowing full well that it's going to make me feel a hundred times worse. But I could not go home with that money. I could not hold on to that money any longer. I had to get a drug. Even if I knew that drug was going to make me sicker, I had to get it. Yeah, it, it makes no sense. And then I'm feeling terrible. So I take a few hits from the crack. I throw up in the passenger seat. I'm, I'm jittery. I, and then I, I would suck that crack down in 15, 10, 15 minutes. All gone. $40 for the crack. Gone. Now I have no. Now a heroin dealer pops up. And I have no money for the heroin. I'm twice as sick. In withdrawals. Jittery. And I have to go drive another 10 miles back home, think of another lie, another way to steal, another $40, even more sick now. And I, this would happen weekly. Makes no sense. I, I didn't even know why I did. Why can't I go home with this money? Why can't I just wait, sit for 10, 15 minutes till a, 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 a opiate a heroin dealer pops up? But I couldn't do that. I had to get the, some kind of drug, any kind of drug, even if that drug was going to put me into a torturous situation, I had to get it. It's, it's 
I still, I still can't even figure the psychology out behind that. One of these times, it's in, it's later in the afternoon, and I'm trying to get the heroin, and uh, I, I team up with some friends, a guy who shoots heroin, and we go down, we buy the crack, and we're driving away, and the, the cops had, the, had we're watching the gas station we met met this the dealer at, and we have two cops pull us over within five seconds. They yank us out of the car. They tore my car apart. The guy with the crack sitting next to me threw the crack inside of a, a soda, a soda uh, with a straw. They never found that. They pull him out. They pull me out. They asked him if he had a needle. He said no. They found the needle. They fucking flipped out, and I don't blame them. I remember sitting on the curb shaking because I thought they were going to kick my ass too. I didn't have no needle or anything, and I had been fairly honest with him. I was, his feet were in front of me, and there were two cops' feet on either side, and they had him up against the car, and I see his feet come off the ground, and they're punching him. And I, all I could see, I got my head down, I'm handcuffed, and I could just see his feet, boof, 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 boof. I hear his head. I hear the fucking smacks of the fist. And this is right on South Main Street in a city. You know, cars going right by. They are beating the holy fuck out of my friend. Two feet in front of me. You know, I just see his feet vibrating off the ground. Off the ground. Against the car. Just hearing the smacks into the face. You motherfucker. You hype. You dirty fucking hype using boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, God, please don't. Don't kill me. You know, and they tore the back seat out of my, I had a Thunderbird at that time, a Ford Thunderbird. And it was, I, I trashed it. Beautiful car. My mother sold me, trashed it. They tore the back seat out of it right there on the side of the street. Tore everything out. The, tore the middle console right out. Tore the car apart. Threw the, salad, threw the soda on the ground. Right? They end up taking my, fr my friend away to jail. I drive home. I tell his girlfriend, hey, man, your boyfriend ain't coming home. He's in jail. She freaks out because she can't get her heroin now. All right. So surprising to me, about an hour or two later, he does make bail, comes back home. And he says, hey, let's go back and get the crack on the side of the road in the soda, in the soda, in the soda, in the soda, in the, soda uh, the paper, wax paper glass, you know, the soda, soda cup. Let's go back and get it. I'm like, fuck you, man. Are you kidding? We know they're watching that gas station. They went back. They went back. I didn't go. I ended up getting my heroin. They come back. They're like this. We didn't find it. Anybody that knows, uh, when you do coke or crack or meth, your jaw starts grinding. Yeah. So they obviously were lying. They did because I paid for it. And they didn't want to tell me they found it and smoked it all on the way back. And I didn't really give a fuck at that point. I was just glad I still had all my teeth. <laughs> I drove away and I was in jail. Um, you know, and that was the end of the story. My friends lied to me. One got his the same one that lied to me got his ass fucking royally kicked by the police. My car got tore apart. Yeah, fun night, man. Just just another average night. That same house that I was sitting in, I pull up one Friday night, and I see about four black LTDs parked up and down the road. And I'm like, son of a bitch, he's getting raided right now. And it went through my attic mind. It's like, I bet you they, they wouldn't put all those cops inside the, the house without people outside watching, you know, trap out, making sure that, you know, they're not going to get ambushed. So that means somebody's already watching me as I pull up now. That means I have to continue in. So, guy, I got a six-pack. I walk up, and I walk up to the door. It's, it's twilight, going dark, and I see all the cops tearing the house apart. I see that same doofy son of a bitch sitting in a chair, handcuffed. <laughs> and I knock on the door. Because I had to. I, I knew they were watching me. I knew they had people somewhere surveillance. And the cops opened the door and yank, come on in. Come on into the party. 
All I had was a six pack of uh, Bud six pack at that point. Which they said. They looked in the bag. That's all you fucking guys is Bud, Budweiser six pack. They ended up letting me go. They ended up finding a tiny rock of cocaine in this guy's house. And he went to jail for that. Got out later. Me and him went back to my house. Smoke crack. It, it's amazing. All these arrests. All these close calls. And we just went, woo! And then went and got more drugs. Instantly. Instantly. Like we needed them more at that point to calm down. It was insanity. Like I said, like I, you know, it makes no sense. I Right now, with a clear mind, 13 years, a clear mind, looking back at the stuff I did on a daily basis, I can't even, for the life of me, I, I can't put any sense to it. It was insanity. It was true insanity. There's more, too. There's, you know, this was a, the Watertown police... We're getting to know me. I I lived at that point. I lived in a third floor apartment, and looking down into the single family house next door was one of the key members of the Connecticut Narcotic Task Force that lived in that house. So he could look right up into my windows and see my lights on all night and me smoking crack next door to him, next door to his personal home. Yeah, my let me tell you, my uh. He wanted me in jail badly. We neither one of us knew the other one lived there when I moved in. Um, here's one last story about that narcotic technical task task officer. This is another reason why he I had to get out of town because this guy was going to put me away. I come out of a, a Bill's Friendly Tavern in in Oakville, Connecticut. And I walk out, and it's it's a it's a coke and crack den at this point. Smoke crack right at the bar, selling all all day long. We go out on the back porch and smoke or smoke weed, crack everything. And there's a parking lot right in view of that, right across the street. So I go over to my car, and I see that car from next door, that LTD, that that fucking technical narcotic task force. I was like, that's his car. And I walk over, and he's laying in the back seat. I look in and he looks up at me. He's got a big pair of binoculars and he's watching the back of the bar. And I found him out. Yeah. He looks at me. I look at him. I'm like, oh, I, I turn around. He didn't stop me. I went back. I got in my car, drove the fuck out of there. Went home, got on the phone, called up Bill's Friendly Tavern. Hey, man, you got a fucking narc laying in a car in your back parking lot. Yeah, right, Daryl. What are you, fucking high? Click. Okay, 